This module covers the SOPs for normal operation. In addition to a normal flight preparation, check following items affecting our NPAR operations. Minimum equipment list. Rain prediction. Performance calculation. Weather conditions. The minimum required equipment must be serviceable before conducting any RNPAR operations. This is also applicable in flight before starting the approach. Rain predictions are required for the intended time of RNPAR operations. There might be different departures existing for the same runway. Ensure to use the regulatory takeoff weight charts corresponding to the intended RNPAR SID or engine out SID. Check weather conditions appropriate for RNPAR operations, like outside air temperature at or above minimum temperature for the RNPAR approach. Planning minima for the alternate airport, refer to your operational documentation. No adverse weather conditions, like thunderstorms, as deviations from RNPAR trajectories might not be possible, particularly below MSA. Wind effect on RF legs. Amend the cockpit preparation to include RNPAR specific items, like Check required equipment for RNPAR operation. Flight plan. RNPAR procedures must not be modified by the crew, for example, insertion, deletion of waypoints. Perf page. Check insert thrust reduction, acceleration altitude, and engine out acceleration altitude for takeoff and go around phases. Secondary flight plan, preferably engine out SID, to cover cases that are not detected by the aircraft and to allow flying the engine out SID on crew decision. Navigation aid deselection, deselect the radio update of the FMS position. Navigation A tuning for display, as per company policy. In the takeoff briefing, include specific items for RNPAR operation, like RNP takeoff minimum and RNP required accuracy, location of the DP, chart and NDs, engine failure before DP, engine out SID. Engine failure after DP, SID. During taxi, verify your PFD and ND settings. For RNPAR departure, check both GPS and NAV. GPS primary available. FMA. On runway, before thrust application, check that El Devis Santerd. Engage the autopilot, as required after liftoff. Once the RNPAR departure is completed, remove the navigation aid deselection and set the radio navigation page accordingly. Amend the approach preparation to include RNPAR specific items, like Review aircraft status versus minimum equipment for RNPAR. Verify that wind and temperature are within limits. Identify the key points, intermediate approach fix, vertical intercept point, and or FAP, missed approach point. Speed constraints. Altitude constraints. Missed approach. Enter thrust reduction altitude and acceleration altitude for go around. 
Navigation aids the selection. Navigation aids for display. For the RNPAR approach, check. Both GPS in navigation. RNP value. GPS primary and high accuracy are available. The vertical error budget does not include any margin for altimeter setting errors. It is imperative that the crew sets and cross checks the correct altimeter setting. The difference of altimeter reading must remain within 75 feet. The altimeters need to be cross checked before the FAB. During an ILS approach, an incorrect altimeter setting will impact the intermediate approach altitude, but not the glide slope itself. During an RNPAR approach, in addition to the intermediate approach altitude, also the vertical path of the final approach is impacted as bar OV nav is used. On the left hand side, to match the altitude constraints, a level off is required, which is indicated on the PFD by ALT in magenta. On the right hand side, the descent path satisfies the altitude constraints. In this case, only the altitude selected on the FCU is displayed. Manage the vertical profile to be at the vertical intercept point altitude before the VIP. Arm the approach so that final approach engages before or at the VIP or FAP if no VIP is published. Verify that all engagement conditions are met. Pay special attention to the descent arrow color. If the color is blue, all conditions are met. If the color remains white, one or more conditions are not met. When final approach is displayed on FMA, select the go-around altitude on the FCU. Disconnect AP for landing will be displayed on the PFD after crossing decision altitude minus 50 feet. The disconnection of the AP is based on the crew decision. Refer to FCOM for AP limitations. Keeping FDs on maintains LDEV and VDEV guidance down to the runway threshold. Crossing the runway threshold the FDs revert to heading vertical speed mode. A modification of the aircraft systems has been introduced with FMS Release 1A, which automatically arms the navigation mode when TOGA is selected. If NAV does not engage automatically, engage it manually. No modification of the flight plan part, where the waypoints will be crossed below MSA. In case of a flight plan revision, for example new destination, Copy the active flight plan into the secondary before the revision is made to be able to retrieve the original flight plan in case needed. Example of an RNPAR approach with a RNP value of 0.3 nautical mile. If LDEV exceeds the call out value with a tendency to increase further, PF must take over manually, steering the aircraft back to the desired flight path in order not to exceed 1 RNP. If LDEV exceeds 1 RNP, a go-around must be initiated. If VDEV exceeds minus 75 feet 3 quarter of a dot after FAP, a go-around must be initiated. Note, one dot corresponds to 100 feet. If the dev exceeds minus 75 feet, three quarter of a dot after FAP, 
A go around must be initiated. Following an example of call outs during approach VDEV, LDEV, Bank, Sync Rate. Normal zone within call out limits. Monitoring LDEV, VDEV. Analysis takeover zone between call out limits and operational limit. Take appropriate actions to reduce deviations or go around if the trend clearly indicates that the operational limit will be exceeded. Extraction zone, outside operational limit. Initiate a go around with the most appropriate escape maneuver.